Many people are familiar with using Google Translate as a consumer to translate a menu or um, you know a road sign or something like that. When you get into business and you're distributing a, a product or a service or you're marketing to people or supporting to people in other countries, historically that has been done entirely manually by people. But now with AI systems in the enterprise, we can use do that uh, in a much more automated and efficient way. And tell me about your motivation in starting Lil. My co-founder and I have been working on uh, our most of our professional life has been about making the internet multilingual. And we met working on Google Translate. And so we thought it was like the most important product coming out of computer science at that time. But what we noticed was that while it had had massive impact for consumers, businesses didn't use it at all, really, including Google, Google itself. And so we went on uh, to, our, our view was, let's build an enterprise version of it that, that all large businesses that are operating globally can use. And what sets it apart from its competitors? Yeah, so it's a complete end-to-end -end platform. And so it has a couple of things that are absolutely essential in the enterprise that you don't need in consumer world. The first is custom model building. So it is a uh, it has a self-learning capability, so the model will tune itself to each use case. So the models we would use for the New York Stock Exchange, for example, would be different than the ones that we would use for Intel, which is one of our customers. The second thing that it has is it has connectivity into enterprise systems. So data in the enterprise lives in databases, content management systems, source code repositories. So we automate all the workflows of getting content out of those systems running it through the model and then putting it back in. And the last thing that we offer is what we call verification. So as you know, AI models, they can't tell you whether they're right or they're wrong. So we have a service that we use uh, that can, uh, we have people who validate parts of the output of the AI systems. And then what, what the magic comes in is that validation uh, retrains the models. So it's this very elegant self-learning loop where the systems uh, tune themselves to each of the customers that we work with. Would you say that's why Lilt is so easy to deploy in comparison to other AI solutions? People are really excited about AI right now, which is great. And you know, AI dates back, the, the term date, dates back to 1956. So it's not like it's a, it's a new thing. What is new is uh, the capability of these language models to do really useful things, whether that's conversational interaction or translation or news summarization. Um, and so we're used to using that as consumers. When you get in the enterprise, customizing those models so that they work really, really well for a financial use case or an e-commerce use case, many businesses, in fact, almost all businesses struggle with that, including the largest and most sophisticated technology companies. So our system uh, makes it very easy to do that. And AI, like you said, is at the forefront of many discussions around the world, especially here on Wall Street. I mean. How do you keep up with the ever-changing landscape, remain innovative and ahead of the curve? It's really important in this age to work with businesses that have people in leadership who uh, are from the field. And so my co-founder and I were both research scientists. We met working at Google, but uh, I, I was a researcher from Stanford. He's on the faculty at Berkeley. And so we have a full team that both contributes to the advancement of science, but also brings scientific advancement directly into enterprise use cases. And I think that's the way that you really keep up as a partner with a company that has leadership, uh, AI leadership from the top all the way down. Now, do you think AI is gonna take over one day? <laughs> I think the right way to think about it is the tasks that AI can do. So, and there are already many tasks that AI is much better at than we are. You know, search is an AI task and we as humans are not able to have the entire internet in our brains and then produce a result instantly doing that. So that is already a superhuman capability. And I think what's really interesting is that um, there are more and more tasks in the enterprise, whether it's writing or creating software or uh, uh, doing content generation and translation that AI can do. And that frees people up to do uh, go do other jobs that are uh, cognitively more demanding, require creativity, uh, planning, intuition, and problem solving that AI systems are not good at. And obviously you need people to manage the AI and fix it, right? That's correct. So I think we talked about the model building part. The next layer up is workflows. And in businesses, you have groups of people working together in teams to accomplish tasks. And so workflows suddenly get very complicated. And so you need a system that can orchestrate 
how people and AI work together to accomplish a task. And what's next for LILT? Well, what I'm most excited about is the V3 models that we recently released. So this is our latest and most capable generation of models um, uh, that follows on the V2 models that we released last year. Um, we've got a bunch of benchmarks that we published. And this is really great for customers because the customization capability is much better. And also the um, uh, capability for languages that uh, are, are harder for AI systems to, to process. So these are lower resource languages with fewer speakers. Uh, the translation quality is, is excellent. And so this turns into a higher efficiency and shorter uh, turnaround time for our customers. Can you give me some examples of customer use cases? And let me give you two. I'll give you a private sector one and I'll give you a public sector one. So the private sector uh, use case is, is Intel, uh, which is one of our uh, longest standing partners and a real pioneer in AI. Uh, for most of the last four years, every word that you can find on intel.com and any piece of marketing, uh, product enablement, product sheets that appears in a non-English language, that's actually AI generated uh, through our system. And so that's enabled Intel to massively scale their global operations into other parts of the world. Again, moving from a fully human, service-based, labor-based workflow to mostly AI automation. So that's one in the private sector. The one that I'm really excited about in the public sector is the National Weather Service. So in, in 2021, uh, Hurricane Ida killed a number of people who didn't speak English, and they didn't get the weather alerts that a hurricane was coming from the National Weather Service. So the Weather Service set out on a route to make all of their products available in different languages. So starting in 2022, we rolled out custom models that were actually customized by meteorologists in the weather service. And now all of the hurricane alerts that go out in Spanish in the southeast of the US, uh, that go out in American Samoan during the Pacific hurricane season, and then most recently uh, in Vietnamese and Chinese in the northeast, um, those are all AI generated uh, with over 99% accuracy and people now can access all of the Weather Services products at weather.gov slash translate. And so that's an example of, I think there's a lot of discussion about AI taking jobs or you know, Terminator style scenarios, but actually this is a use case where AI gives people access to information that they just didn't have before and it's life-saving information. Wow, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Spence, for joining me on Taking Stock. Thank you.